All right, today we are uh, placing wheel bearings in an 8.8 .8 rear end uh, that I have uh, narrowed and retrofitted for a uh, 65 Mustang. And I uh, narrowed the rear end housing because uh, I want to put big 10 and a half inch wheels with big tires on the back. Uh, however, I was hopeful that when I got new axles that they would fit. Uh, they need to be narrowed too, so I had to ship them off to uh, Dutchman's in uh, Idaho. Uh, so if you have C-clip axles, look up Dutchman's in Idaho. They uh, do it, I think it's 110 bucks uh, for both axles to have them shortened. Uh, since I have them out, might as well replace the wheel bearings. So went down to my local AutoZone, and they make the, uh, the dies. Uh, for different size bearings. This is the smallest one that they have for uh, my bearings. And then they make the hammer, pull hammer to uh, get them out. So I already got the first one out. It actually came out pretty easy, kind of scary. It came out so easy. Uh, so now we're hit the uh, second one and uh, I'll show you how this tool works. And hopefully it goes as easy as the first one. So, first a little bit of my rear end uh, setup uh, so like I said it's a uh, 8.8 .8. it's out of a 90 something uh, Lincoln uh, so it's a posi uh, track rock rear end uh, I got the housing and stuff off of it because I had to pull the uh, C clips out to get the axles out uh, I went uh, the limiting factor on 65 Mustangs for putting on big wheels without having to tub it is actually the leaf springs. So I actually have taken the leaf springs out. I have a uh, four link uh, core over with a uh, pan hard bar suspension system. Uh, this is a uh, Bolton system. It's by Hydes, uh, I believe. Uh, so it's a full Bolton uh, system. Uh, it's not too bad. The only thing that you really had to do was uh, weld on the brackets uh, to the rear end. So I had to weld these puppies on there. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Uh, this bracket right here is a uh, Bolton uh, bracket. Uh, I can weld it in. Actually, when I get a welder or, or borrow a friend's welder, I actually probably will weld it in. Uh, still don't have the end caps on my mufflers yet. I got to do that. The, the only problem with putting in a uh, full link with the pan hard bar is it limits your rear exhaust options. Uh, that pan, pan hard bar now is exactly where the uh, rear exhaust tailpipes used to come up and over. Uh, so either you got to go under or you got to just do some type of exhaust dumps and that's probably what I ended up doing. But all right, let's get this axle back out. Okay, so the way that this puppy works is uh, you back off the nut, push this through, and then pull it back to where it can lock into place. Tighten this nut all the way down to give it the lock in. Of course, your hands will be all completely greasy. There we go. Some people on YouTube might be pissed of how easy that came out. I know a lot of Chevy guys with the uh, uh, 10 bolts uh, that have the same C-clip type axles. Yeah, from what I hear, that's kind of a pain in the ass to do. Uh, like I said, don't know if it's just a really good tool or whether it's scary on how easy these puppies came out. However, if you have your axles out, Replace the bearings. I rep when I took the bearing out of the other side, one of the uh, little bearings popped out. Which means, thank God that I did this, because that would have been uh, real crappy to put all this thing back together and then have to take it all apart again just to do the bearings. So, bought a new bearing and seal kit. It's like, I don't know, 29 bucks off of uh, CJ Pony Parts, I believe. So, cheap. 
not too bad. Like I said, this is a, a rental tool from AutoZone. So you pay them 100 bucks, borrow it for a day, take it back, get your 100 bucks back. So not too bad. All right, now I gotta put new ones in. Okay, so took some brake cleaner, cleaned everything up. Then uh, repacking all of it with uh, fresh grease. I always have tubs of grease in the house. It's just we're working on suspensions, redoing old cars. It's just like wheel bearings are like the number one thing. In fact, when uh, next week when we go and pick up our our race car, our ex drag car, that's gonna be the number one thing before we go racing. Is new bearings. All the way around. Okay, so I'm sure there's probably a press tool or something uh, that guys are supposed to use for this. I don't have one. So I do have a one and five eight socket that actually fits over the bearing uh, on the metal. So that way I'm not actually hitting the uh, bearing pieces. And I have a hammer that I gotta go get, rubber mallet. So we will try to get this into place using this method. I'm sure some people are going to be kicking the screen. And if it really doesn't work, I will post a future video on that, on how not to do it. in the race all the way, all the way flush. And I'm not putting a ton of pressure while hammering this. In fact, I'm only holding it like a third of the way down. I will check it, yep, okay. So that's flush all the way around. We take our trusty seal. Hammer that flush. That rolls a heck of a lot better in there. Now what I need is a set of axles for I can uh, put this puppy back on the ground and go drive it. So here's just a quick overview of the uh, car. Uh, it's a 65 Mustang. Uh, like I said, I'm redoing the rear suspension because it's going to be pro touring. I'm going to put a nice big 10 and a half inch wheel in the back. It's a Continental uh, Extreme uh, tires all the way around. Uh, they're uh, Halbrand wheels. Uh, these are actually Factory 5 Racing Halbrand wheels. So when you buy the Factory 5 Racing kits, uh, or uh, component cars. Uh, these are the wheels and tires that you buy with them. Uh, I actually have a Factory 5 and I like the wheels that I put on it. I decided I want to put them on my Mustang. Uh, been a real pain in the butt because uh, the smallest wheel they make for the front is a uh, 9 inch wheel. Uh, so I'm running a 9 inch in the front. Uh, I'm running a Mike Myers uh, core over racing suspension. Uh, single adjustable. Uh, I got it sitting pretty low. I like to get it to go lower. Uh, I rolled the inner fenders uh, flat. And in fact, it's slightly dimpled right there and right there. 
uh, from rolling the fenders. Didn't heat them up quite enough. Uh, like to get a little bit lower. Got to get it on the road and get it driving first. Uh, it does have spinners. I just don't have the spinners on because I keep working on it. Um, however, it, it's a it's a '65. Been in my family since '71. Um, put a Shelby fiberglass hood on it. I uh, haven't put haven't put the stripes on it yet. And now it's a uh, now it's raining. It's Oregon, and it's getting cold. And pending the garage, kind of needed to be about 70 in the garage to get my uh, hardener uh, and reducer to the right temperature. If that, I gotta go by cold temp uh, hardener and reducer. We don't want to do that. Uh, here, I'll uh, lift the hood up on this puppy. Show that to you real quick. So this is a, uh, a 5.0, uh, 302, uh, not that you can see it because I covered it up with air conditioning and uh, the alternator, but it does have a GT40 SVO with aluminum racing heads. Uh, it's got the uh, uh, Cobra style uh, uh, intake, uh, it's got a cold air intake going into it. Uh, it's got 24 pound injector, it's just got an F cam in it. Uh, it's got stainless steel long tube headers. Uh, it's got stainless steel Magnaflow mufflers, but then it's got just regular pipes running back there, H pipe. Uh, I did put uh, power brakes on it, uh, and I'm running the I'm running the Mustang Steve brackets to put the 2008 uh, Ford Mustang rotors and calipers on there so they're 13 and a half inch rotors uh dual piston calipers um big brakes and, and with the power brake booster i mean this thing just flat stops now i mean it, it stops better than you know probably 80 percent of the new cars out there uh definitely a lot better than when i had just disc fronts and drum rears um i don't have my strut tower braces on yet. Uh, I know by one of the Mike Meyer makes ones that fits around the fuel injection, but I'm worried about how it's going to fit over this tube. Uh, so I got to do measurements and stuff like that. Uh, but this has kind of been a five year project. Uh, so busy coaching my kids' sports and running her around all of her stuff that I just haven't had time to get it done. And I'll, I'll do some other videos, uh, but I got to. Factory 5 uh, Cobra, that's really fun to drive. My wife's got a uh, 2008 uh, Chevy Corvette uh, that does amazing burnouts. Uh, we got a, out there you can see, uh, that's actually my daily driver. It's a 1969 MGB GT uh, that currently needs some brakes done. Let's see, just real quickly, uh, this is kind of my shop. Uh, big TV out here because well, I like watching TV, and I like having my family and my kids out here work, or my kid uh, out here working with me. Uh, so we got her toy stuff. We got tons of balls and bikes and golf clubs. I mean, it's a regular garage. I just try to keep as much house stuff out as I can because uh, I got my squat rack and my rower for that way I can work out. We can work out as a family out here uh, during the winter. Um, write some CrossFit workouts up on the board, but uh, I got just Harbor Freight, tool benches, they do the job. Uh, got parts just kind of scattered all, all around here. Uh, we have a uh, 260 V8, uh, that's going in my yellow 64 and a half Mustang, uh, when I bring it back home someday. Uh, that's my 289. Uh, that's actually going in our uh, chump car race car. Uh, that'll probably be our next video uh, Next week, uh, we're gonna go pick up a uh, uh, Junk we're calling it a rust tank uh, About a hundred thousand bucks, so we're on good But yeah, that's kind of a Quick overview of the car. Hopefully I get my axles back uh, in the next uh, week or two can throw those in there and uh, Take this thing for a real good drive